Good morning. Welcome to EBC this morning. It's great to see you all. If you're joining us online or you're here in the sanctuary, everybody in the sanctuary, just give me a wave. Yay. You are at an all-age service this morning. Okay, so whether you're young, old, or somewhere in between, like Neil and I, <laughs> we are here today to worship Jesus and to learn about him. Is that okay? Yeah. So, the kids will be in the program, in the service today for the whole time. And if you've got a baby or you'd like to use our creche, please feel free to go down to the creche and use that. But parents, you need to stay with your children. So this morning, we are in Daniel chapter 6. We're thinking about Daniel's story. And we're thinking about how it points to Jesus, the real king of everyone everywhere. Now, I don't know if anyone in this place has got any habits, good habits. I don't want to hear about your bad habits. Good habits, okay? So what good habits have we got? Who puts the bins out? That's a good habit, isn't it, Paul? Yes, Paul, Paul really appreciates that. <laughs> what other good habits? Shout out. Brushing your teeth. And you're so grateful that your parents teach you how to brush your teeth. What other good habits? Washing the dishes, Jean. Absolutely. Tidying your room, Kurosh. That is a skill you need for life, isn't it, Neil? Tidying your room. There's some adults have not learned that one yet. Any more? Any more good habits? Well... How many of you sing in the bath or the shower? <laughs> yep, I like to do a bit of that. Who twiddles their thumbs? Yep. <laughs> well, today we're going to start in this story of Daniel, and it's about a habit that he had. It was a great habit. It was a habit, though, that got him into trouble. You see, Daniel knew God. He knew the real king of everyone, everywhere. Okay, we'll need to get some actions going for that. So everyone, so look around you and go like that and point to everyone around you. You can move your head, point it, and everywhere, everywhere. Daniel loved God so much that three times a day he had this habit, and it was to kneel down and pray. Prayer is talking to God. It's a conversation. It's talking and it's listening. So we can talk to him anywhere, anytime, about anything. About absolutely anything. Wasps' nests, the size of screens in your shower. What else can we talk to God about? What we're going to have for our dinner tonight? The things that we're really worried about, the people that are on our hearts. We can talk to God about anything. What a wonderful habit that Daniel had. And I wonder this morning, how could that get anyone into trouble? So we're going to discover how Daniel's good habit of praying to God, the real God, the real king, got him into trouble. But let's stand to our feet. We're going to um, be led this morning. Katie and Colin, Katie and Neil even, are going to <laughs> lead us in worship. Colin, somewhere else. Yeah, somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> let's stand together and let's worship God. Thank you. 
Our God. How great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our Pray, Lord, we declare your splendor and your glory over this whole earth. We thank you, God, for your majesty. We thank you that you are not silent. You are not quiet. You are involved in the day-to-day -day of our lives and of your universe. We can trust you. You are faithful. You are loving. You are caring. And Lord, we thank you that as we cry out to you in prayer, you hear us, your people. We bless you, God. Amen. 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 So we're going to have three minutes now just to turn to one another, welcome one another, and then get back to our seats. <laughs>
actually getting faster at that. I know, yeah. Neil and I just want to add our welcome, especially if you're visiting this morning here. It's great to have you. There'll be tea and coffee straight after the service in our cafe this morning. And um, if you've just joined us online, a warm welcome. Absolutely. Really short EBC updates today. First thing is just about Polar Explorers. Not Polar Express. No, not Polar Express. I keep Express. calling it Polar Express. <laughs> it is not Polar Express. Polar Explorers. What is Polar Explorers? It's our holiday club. It starts at the end of June. And it's just to say next week, publicity leaflets and registration will start. Um, and you can book online or you can use paper. Jinx, what's that? What's paper? Um, so that's all happening. That's all next week. So we're looking forward to getting that all out. And also linked to the Holiday Club, our next team meeting is on Wednesday, the 1st of June at 7 p.m. There is still time if you are available, even part of the week, and you'd like to join in. Um, and thank you so much to everyone who's put their forms in and gone on Zoom around their PBG. We really appreciate that. Um, and there's a few folks just outstanding, but we've now done it. Yep, we have. Well, we're in process. <laughs> we're in process. We're in process. We're in process. Um, this coming week, we're heading into Ascension Week, which is this period between um, Jesus um, ascending to heaven and then the Spirit being poured out at Pentecost. And for, if you've been around EBC, you'll know that for the last, this will be the fifth year that we've joined in a global wave of prayer called Thy Kingdom Come. And uh, we're going to watch a little video just now just to encourage us about that. But these are the dates between May the 26th and the 5th of June. As a church family, we are going to pray that God's kingdom would come and that many people would come to know the love and the peace of Jesus. So be thinking about people that maybe you're concerned about, people you work with, your neighbours, family. Yeah. And we're praying specifically in this period that they would know the love and the peace. And one of, one of the of things Jesus. just about Thy Kingdom Come is it's got a great app. So they update it every year. This year it's even better. And it's also got films and it's got videos for families as well so families can get involved. Yep. But it is really, really good this year. Lots of resources. So let's watch the video that's been released for this Thy Kingdom Prayer is not about changing the heart of God, but it's about changing uh, the heart of the one praying. The best thing anyone can ever do is to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. Has a family member or friend ever actually prayed for you? Yes. Many times. I hope so. Uh, <laughs> my hope is in Jesus Christ who is not dead, but he is risen. In prayer, you tend to start talking quite a lot, and then you find that actually, um, it's more about listening. I didn't know if I was going to go to heaven. I didn't even really know what that meant or what that looked like. I'd ignored it for so long. Jesus is always there when you're facing something hard. We have to cultivate a grateful heart for even the smallest of things. I am thankful. He has done absolutely everything conceivable to make sure that we are no longer separated from him. It's just really nice for someone to like uh, offer their time and like their thinking space. So if we're praying for people to know the love of God, Muller would say, keep on praying for them. God is at work. I love there that the, the gentleman from the Orthodox Church said, Jesus has done everything conceivable to bring us to God. And when you know Jesus, you want other people to know him, don't you? Yeah. Um, so it's about praying for five people. So even right now, Holy Spirit, would you put people on our hearts? It might be the same five names that you prayed for last year at this time. Who have I to be praying for? And also there was a, a little hint there and a nudge for us to offer to pray. Not just to even say sometimes, I'm praying for you as I go, although that's appropriate. But sometimes just saying in the moment, can I pray for you? Yeah. So we're praying that we'll have lots of opportunities through this time to do that. 
Yeah. Yourself, Anil. Yeah. So we have been, as you know, we, we started with the message bus um, and we've had the message bus and it's moved into Youth Alpha. Um, we've started to look at the Holy Spirit in Youth Alpha. It's been on every uh, Sunday night. We've managed to uh, break it's a confession. We've bro broken the table tennis table with so much exuberance. Oh. Confession. <laughs> but as well as table tennis and FIFA football and all kinds of stuff, we've also been exploring uh, youth alpha. We've been exploring Jesus and uh, it has been great, hasn't it? It's been brilliant. So we've been very, we've had seven young people, um, very regular every week, an amazing team and food. And last Sunday night, we just wanted to share, we used in the Who is the Holy Spirit there was a powerful testimony that was so good, we thought the whole church family needs to hear this. So this is a girl called Tracy Lee Pratt, who is a singer, songwriter with Hillsong. So let's listen to her story. Without a doubt. So I grew up in a very um, rough household. Um, my mom was a very heavy alcoholic and my father was quite abusive towards her. And then when I was about four years old, my brother and I got taken away from our parents and um, put into a, well, the foster care system. That's kind of how I met God, um, through one of the foster families. It was very much the first time for me that I was seeing a healthy family. Um, I actually felt safe. When I turned eight, we had been running through the foster care system my parents, um, three days after my birthday, my parents, well, on my birthday, my parents got into this disagreement and then basically three days later, my mom had applied for a divorce um, because I guess living, obviously it wasn't ideal for us or her. Um, but then a week later, um, my f father basically out of anger and wanting to control the situation and control her, um, actually took her life and then took his own. Um, so that's, yeah, that was for me was, I guess as I think people believe that because you're younger, you, you aren't aware of these situations that, and it doesn't kind of, you don't accept it in a sense. And just immediately, I think as a young girl, I felt the presence of God say, it's gonna be okay. Like, I've got you. Um, and then they sat us down. And I guess my first reaction wasn't was just to sit there and just kind of accept it. But then the anger came later and the hurt and the pain of knowing that my father he just chose to, to end his life, um, leaving his kids behind. Um, and not only that, but he stole somebody else's life. Um, and so the anger came, but it wasn't towards him, it was towards God. Um, I guess as a young, at a young age, you're still trying to come to the realization of who God is, what he does. I was very angry at God specifically because I just couldn't understand why a God who loves us and a God who is so for us would allow something like that to happen. But it wasn't up until someone invited me to church and I remember going and I knew that God was there, but it wasn't until that God I actually accepted God into my life. Um, and it wasn't, it was more than just a, a prayer at the end of a service. It's not until you actually have your own encounter with the Holy Spirit that you, that it becomes incredible, even more real. So, well, that's for me. It just, I remember just sitting there and just crying and thinking, all right. There's a reason for my life. There's a reason I'm alive. And so for the rest of my life, every single day, I'm going to allow, I'm going to allow the Holy Spirit to just move in me and use me. I basically, my whole life, have known I wanted to be a songwriter. I was sitting in a youth service and um, we were, our topic for the semester was never alone. And I sat there and it just, I couldn't get those two words out of my, out of my mind. I said to myself, I'm going to write a song about this. For me, it was a personal reminder that I'm okay and I'm not alone, even when it feels like you are. It's a simple message, but it's a very honest one of God is always there. When you least expect it, when you feel worthless or shameful, 
but when the Holy Spirit comes over you, you were strong and you were courageous and you were capable of more than you ever thought. For me, the Holy Spirit is a joy and it's the backbone of my life because without the Holy Spirit, I think I'm just me. But with Him, I'm, I'm stronger, I'm capable and I'm not fearful. Just incredible how she encountered Jesus, then the Spirit, and that adoption that she so needed into God's family. We're going to take a few minutes to pause and pray as a church. Um, we invite you to do this if you're online as well. So just if you can get into twos or threes, we would love if we could take time this morning to pray that the kingdom of God would come and the Spirit would be at work continually amongst our youth for polar explorers, our holiday club, and also as we all go in to thy kingdom come. So can I invite you to stand and let's take a few minutes just to do this, to pray his kingdom will come, that we will all ages encounter the love of Jesus and the power of the spirit. And then we'll come back together with a song of worship. Thanks, Sharon.
Okay, can I invite you to, to bring your prayers? And, and let's keep praying as a church this week for our young people here in the, the church family, young people who are not here, and for the kids in the community as well, that they'll link into the, the holiday club. Um, we're going to do a song with actions now, Katie, aren't we? Yeah, but we need helpers. We need helpers. <laughs> so, this is a song called Great Big God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, do you want to talk us through the actions? Uh, I think it's, you'll be able to tell me. Our God is a great big God. Thank you, Duncan. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and he holds us in his hands. Okay, then you sing that again. It's, he's higher than a skyscraper and deeper than a submarine. You go down, but my knees are dodgy. So I'm <laughs> <laughs> submarine. He's wider. wider than the universe and beyond my wildest dreams. He's and known he's me. Known and me. he's loved me. Mm. Since the, before the world began, how wonderful be, to be a part of God's amazing plan. Easy peasy. So we need some folks up. So anybody, Dorcas, are you, you're desperate yeah. to come up, come up, come up, come up. Dorcas. Who else, is, who else would like to come up? Don't all actually. Can I just say there's going to be a lot of people on this stage soon. <laughs> so just get used. Come on up. Come on up, Gideon. Yep. So let's, let's just in front of these chairs here, Dorcas, so everyone can see us. Will we stand to our feet? Anybody else? Want to join me? And Oh, come on, Daniel. Anybody else? Please. <laughs> Samira, if you come up, and then maybe other people will join you as well. Brilliant. Right, so we need to stand. And um, we'll follow Katie and Dorcas. <laughs> Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God, and He holds us in His hands. Our God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God, and He holds us in His hands. He's higher than the skyscraper. He's deeper than a submarine He's wider than the universe And beyond my wildest dreams And He's known me and He's loved me Since before the world began How wonderful to be a part Of God's amazing plan Our God is a great big God our God is a great big God, our God is a great big God, and He holds us in His hands. He's higher than a skyscraper, He's deeper than a submarine. He's wider than the universe and beyond my wildest dreams. And He's known me and He's loved me since before the world began. How wonderful to be a part of God's amazing plan. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. And He holds us in His last time, our God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God, and He holds us in His hand. Well done. Thank you so much, especially the folks that were up here. Thank you, Katie and Neil. Yeah, you can stay at the front if you want, because you, you might be back up shortly. <laughs> I'm going to have to take a wee sip of water. I'm out of breath with all that jump I was doing. Okay. Can you shout out to me and tell me what Daniel's good habit was, everyone? What, did he, what was his good habit? Helena. He prayed to God. How many times a day? Three times a day. There's something in that, isn't there? Morning, lunchtime, dinner time, or morning, lunchtime, and bedtime. Just a thought. I think that's where we maybe get the, the daily office. 
So Christians down through the years have prayed to God at different times. Now, you will see in front of me here, beside me, I have a number of items. Do you see that? Don't act daft, DBC. <laughs> okay. So, Daniel worked for Darius, King Darius, and he was super powerful. Okay, he was the super powerful king of Babylon. So I need a Darius this morning. So who's feeling super and powerful this morning? Who's feeling super and powerful? A king, I need a king. Yes, up you come. Up you come. Remind me of your name again as you come. What's your name again? Elijah. Elijah, fantastic. Sit down there, Elijah. Right, now actually, what I'll do is I'll, I'll kind of wrap that around you. And you are now King Darius. Okay? Now, this is really all about Daniel and his relationship with God. So I'm going to need a Daniel. So do I have any actual Daniels? Yes. Right, Daniel, give him a big clap. So, Daniel, you could come in this side. And um, we'll give you, because you're pretty special. We'll just do a wee thing like that. Super. Right. So, Daniel was so good at his job that the king wanted him to rule the whole kingdom. So if you could kind of just do a, I want you to rule the whole kingdom. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> but other people worked for the king and they didn't like Daniel. Let me hear you. <laughs> that Daniel prayed to. So he decided, they decided to get Daniel into trouble. So I need some people who are not bad people, but they just don't like Daniel, and they don't like Daniel's God, and they don't like Daniel's habit that he prays. So I need some people to come out and be these people. Irene Riley, you need to come out and be one of these people. But I also have, right, Dorcas, out you come, you can be one of these people, okay? And you can put on a wig, I'm uh, sorry, a beard. Uh, Irene will help you with that because Irene's got one too. And um, I need two more people. Come on. Come on, Kurosh. Oh, out you come. Fantastic. Okay. Right. So we'll let Irene sit down and you guys can just, if you could. That's brilliant. Just getting sorted. It's a beard. It's a beard. Okay. So just you have a wee sit. Just kneel down there. Just, just on the carpet. Super. Right. Let's. Right, so these, oh, Irene, you look amazing. <laughs> right, Irene, you have a seat because you're the older of the friends. Okay? So, the other people who worked for the king, so you work for this king here. So turn around and look at this king. You work for him, so you love him. Oh, they love him. But you do not like Daniel. No. You don't like Daniel, and you don't like the God that he prays to. So, there was a problem. Look, they're getting a plan together. There was a problem. Daniel had done nothing wrong. Nothing. Say nothing. nothing. But then they thought of something. They could use Daniel's habit to get him into trouble. So Daniel's enemies got King Darius to make a new law. It said that for 30 days, no one, say no one, no one, was allowed to pray to anyone except to the king. And if anyone broke the law, they would be thrown into a den full of huge, hungry lions. Now... I need a lion. Who would like to come out and wear this mask? Right, Gideon, out you come. Oh, who's coming out? Gideon, are you coming? Come on. 
Let's get this. Now, there was more than one lion, okay, but I could only get one mask. So bear with me, right? Put that right over your head. You can breathe. You're not allergic to latex, are you? No, I hope not. Okay, so if you could just be around Daniel, that's brilliant. So, oh no. What would Daniel do? Daniel, how are you feeling? What would you do? If he obeyed the king of Babylon, he would stay safe. But if he obeyed God, the real king of everyone, everyone, well, look around, point to people, everyone, everywhere, he would keep praying. And that meant Daniel would be lying food. Oh, safety or lying food? Which would Daniel choose? Daniel's enemies, oh, they're now their, their enemies. Daniel's enemies crept up to his house and looked up at his window. Now, Daniel, I need you to get down on your knees because you were doing, your, or just do that, sitting in your seat as if you're praying. Daniel was praying. So there he was. They snuck up on him and he was praying. They caught him. The plan had worked. So they rushed back and they told the king. They told the king. Daniel was about to become lion food. And I need you to give us your biggest roar, Gideon, and look the fiercest you've ever looked. <laughs> that was brilliant. So, remember King Darius really loved Daniel. He loved him. And so he was very vexed about this. He was so upset. He tried and tried all day to find a way to save Daniel. He couldn't. Are you reading this book? <laughs> he couldn't. Even the king wasn't able to change the law. So when the sun went down, Daniel was taken down into the lion's den. Big roar. <laughs> and there was more than one hungry Gideon lion. He was thrown in. And the king shouts, I hope. You. I hope your God can save you. And another roar, please, Gideon. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay. So it's quite a scary situation. Sometimes even grown-ups feel they're in a lion's den. And they pray to God to keep them safe. Now, a big stone was rolled across the mouth of the den. Everyone went to bed. So could we all remember asleep, please? We're all sleeping. Giving it to God. God's in charge. We're all sleepy. But the king, the king, the king couldn't sleep. He tossed and he turned all night. And in the morning, he rushed back to the den. And he said, Daniel, has your God been able to save you from the lions? And then he listened. And a voice came from the den. And the voice was Daniel's. And he said, yes, I am safe. Yes, I am safe. Yay! Because God had sent an angel to shut the lion's mouths. God saved me because I had done nothing wrong. Nothing. Daniel was lifted out of the den and there wasn't even a scratch in him. Daniel had trusted God and God had saved him. Then, because King Darius was so important and he was a great king, he wrote to all the people in all the countries in all of the world and he said this. Thanks, Sham. Daniel's God is the living God. He is the real king of everyone and everywhere, now and forever. He saves his people. Can you see that up there? Can I look behind me? Yes, you can look behind you. Daniel's God is the living God. He is the real king of everyone and everywhere, now and forever. He saves his people. And can we all say that together? Daniel's God is the living God. He is the real king of everyone and everywhere, 
now and forever. He saves his people. A big cheer. Now, that's sometimes, Kurosh, that's sometimes where we stop the story. But I wonder why God put that story in to the Old Testament. Because remember, Daniel points to, who's the real king? Jesus. Daniel is pointing to Jesus. And remember too that Daniel prayed when his enemies wanted to get rid of him. And that's what Jesus did. When Jesus' enemies wanted to get rid of him, that's what he did. Sorry, Dorcas. Jesus prayed the night before his enemies wanted to catch him. You definitely know this story. And there we have it. Daniel prayed three times a day. And that evening when Jesus thought, I'm going to the cross, my enemies have betrayed me. What did he do? He got down on his knees and he prayed. And some of his followers fell asleep too, didn't they? Yep. In his job, Daniel had done nothing wrong. His enemies had to invent a new law to get Daniel into trouble. And in Jesus' whole life, he had done nothing wrong either, had he? Do you see how Daniel's life and Jesus' life are similar? So what his enemies did was they told lies about Jesus to get him into trouble. And when Daniel was arrested, who else was arrested? Jesus. And he was thrown into the lion's den. Again, God protected him. He prayed. When Jesus knew he was going to be arrested and killed, what did he do? He said on the cross, forgive them, Father, they don't know what to do. The lions in that den were very hungry. Do we have a roar? A really hungry one? <laughs> But the real king of everyone, point around, everywhere brought Daniel out of the den. And Jesus brings us out of our dens, out of the things that trap us, out of the things that are not right in our lives. He does it. And so today, because we're thinking about thy kingdom come and we're thinking about that Daniel was a man who prayed we need to remember that we can enjoy the same habit as Daniel. We can pray every day to Jesus. We can talk to the real king of everyone, everywhere, every day. Amen? Amen. 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 So I think we really need to give these helpers a huge clap. Would you like to keep your beard? No. <laughs> I just not want to keep my beard. No, I want your one. Okay, guys, you can leave your things here. Let's give them a big clap as they go back. So Katie and Neil are going to come and they're actually going to lead us in our final song. We wanted to make this morning just a little bit shorter, but as they come to do that, let's be thinking whatever age and stage we're at, what we can be praying about this week because our God is mighty to save. So let's stand to our feet and let's worship Jesus. Yeah. Everyone needs compassion, love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of a savior. The hope of Savior, He can move the mountains, 
together just to pray out keep standing just speak out your praise and your worship that God is the God who's everywhere every day that we can pray to him that Jesus is the real king just as many of us as possible we short prayers go for it big loud voices Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we thank you. You take us from the pits and you place that crown on our heads. Thank you, God. Is it okay? Yes. Thank you, Lord. More. Yes. Yes. Yep. School, yep. Place, yes. Yes, yes, God. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Father, we pray your favor now upon your people. We thank you that Daniel 
was a man who caught the eye of the king. And we pray, Lord, that as your people, we would shine and let the whole world see that our lives, like Daniel's life, would point to Jesus. And I'm praying today, God, for this week as we go into it, that wherever we put our feet, wherever we go, we would know that you go with us and we shine for you. Lord, you don't call us to stay in this building. You call us to go out into your world. And as Neil was teaching last week, to make disciples. So we honor you today, King Jesus. King Jesus. Amen. Amen. I just want to read the words of the King from Daniel 6, verses 26 and 27. So I'm reading from the Bible today. He said, I decree that everyone throughout my kingdom should tremble with fear before the God of Daniel. He knew that Daniel's God was the real God, for he is the living God and he will endure forever. His kingdom will never be destroyed and his rule will never end. He rescues and he saves his people. He performs miraculous signs and wonders in the heavens and on the earth. He has rescued Daniel from the power of the lions. So Daniel prospered during the reign of Darius and the reign of Cyrus the Persian. And I pray this week, as we go into this week, whatever age and stage we are, we will prosper serving our God. Thank you for being with us. We're going to have tea and coffee. Um, if you're here in our cafe, if you're online, great that you've joined us and we will see you next week. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and He holds us in His hands. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and He holds us in His hands. He's higher than a skyscraper. He's deeper than a submarine. He's wider than the universe and beyond my wildest dreams. And He's known me and He's loved me since before the world began. How wonderful to be a part of God's amazing plan. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God Our God is a great big God And He holds us in His hand Our God is a great big God Our God is a great big God Our God is a great big God And He holds us in His hand He's higher than a skyscraper He's deeper than a submarine Wider than the universe and beyond my wildest dreams. And he's known me and he's loved me since before the world began. How wonderful to be a part of God's amazing plan. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and He holds us in His hands. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God. Our God is a great big God and He holds us in His hands. 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 And he holds us in his hands.